show on the streets, number one ticket for your Bama. Football news in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. How about Nate Owens and Alabama men's basketball dancing on to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament after taking down Charleston and Grand Canyon. Bama men's basketball will face North Carolina. Topsy the Tar Heels in the Sweet 16. We bring you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. We stream this to you on YouTube. Speak of the channel. You know what time it is. You hit that subscribe button right now. You smash that subscribe button. You get involved. You get hooked on to the number one form here for your Bama football news. You hit the like button as well. Give us that thumbs up. Tap the like button. Hit the notification bell also so that way you miss nothing when it comes down to your Bama football content. Daily Super Chat Go, $100. Daily Super Chat Go, 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that from all of you. Also, Bama Nation, check out touchdownalabama.com. Got some new stuff rolling out for you guys. TDA Plus coming. We got that rolling out. TDA Plus out of hot content right there, whether it's Justin Smith, the director of scouting and recruiting with Dex Preps, with the recruiting show right there. Whether it be yours truly, about to soon unveil the first episode of The Way It Is. My own podcast coming out here soon here. So, touchdownalabama.com, TDA Plus, got some new stuff rolling out for all of you. But, we wanted to hear from you guys today. Let your voices be made known by calling 205-448-1358. The number to call in. Let your voice be made known on the show, 205 205- 448-1358, the number right there. But we're jumping now in our topic number one of the conversation, and uh, we are getting closer and closer to the A-Day game for Alabama, which is Saturday, April 13th at 3 p.m. Central Time, Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Normally, and we're during the Nick Saban era, that 17-year run, the first scrimmage, of spring practice normally on a Saturday. This time around, it looks like that first spring, uh, first game like practice of spring ball could be this upcoming Thursday. We'll have to see just to make sure, but we're inching closer and closer to the A-Day game. And uh, for Jalen Milrow, the junior quarterback has a firm hold, got a firm grip here on QB1. Got a firm grip here on the starting quarterback job. Whether it's coaches talking highly about him, teammates talking highly about him, uh, him taking it upon himself to uh, fine-tune, tweak up, improve his passing mechanics, throwing mechanics, not just the deep ball stuff, but the short to intermediate passing game, those 10 to 15-yard throws to either side of the boundary he has made. Huge improvement on that in spring practice. Uh, he has taken it upon himself to process more of this offense, understand this offense, get what Coach DeBoer and quarterback coach Nick Sheridan, uh, co offensive coordinator Jamarcus Shepard is wanting from him. So Miro has done a, 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 strong, a, a strong job of this. He has taken the steps necessary to be that complete player. He's taken the steps necessary to be that complete quarterback. And after practice, Saturday's practice on last week, got a chance to talk to a couple of people I trust vetted on the inside of the program. And what was shared to me was, you know, Milro is now prepared. He's now become, he's now taken that Jalen Hurts type of jump when you look at Jalen Hurts in the NFL. Right, Jalen Hurts by his third year in the NFL had taken that jump as a passer in the pros and got that Eagles team not just on a deep playoff run but to the Super Bowl, right? That was one of the reasons why Hurts was able to get that big contract heading into his fourth year you know, with the team. And when you look at Milrow, the conversation is he's taken that Hurts jump in a sense of 
He's now become a big time passer. He's now become an efficient distributor of the football, not just in the deep ball game, but also the short to intermediate passing routes. Now, of course, we all want to see this unfold in the A-Day game where we all get a chance to see that. We want to see that unfold in the 2024 regular season in the fall where we all get a chance to see that. But for right now, that what's been communicated to me is Jalen Milrow has taken that next step in being that prolific and being that effective, efficient passer for Alabama football. This is big because to me, I feel like Bama's best shot at that national championship right now is him being the starting quarterback. Jalen Milrow has got experience. He has seen bullets flying. You know, last year with Tommy Reese, we saw the success. Almost 3,000 yards passing, 2,834. We're looking at 35 total touchdowns, uh, despite the fact that he got benched uh, week three of the season for the matchup against South Florida. He learned from that, grew from that. And from the Ole Miss game throughout the remainder of the season, we saw a leader and we saw a young man that grew exponentially throughout the season, becoming a permanent team captain. And I believe Eli's second team All-SEC recipient, that being one Jack Milrow. Also, was the SEC championship game MVP. So you have that right there. It'll be interesting to see how he performs during the A-Day game and the spring game. But as of right now, Jalen Milrow has full control here of QB1 for the Crimson Tide. We're going to go to our first break here on the show. Don't touch that down. We're just getting you started here on a Monday. Upon our return, we go to the phone lines. We grab your thoughts, your calls, your conversations. We definitely want to hear from you, the Bama Nation, right after this. Touchdown Alabama is a fully independent outlet that covers all things Alabama football. Founded in 2007 when Nick Saban arrived, we have been here through the entire Nick Saban era. In this new era, now is the perfect time to stay up to date on everything Alabama football and know what's going on, including everything that's going on with recruiting. Our website at touchdownalabama.com will always keep you in the know on everything that's going on with the Crimson Tide. And you can also get breaking news notifications with our app. We have over 100,000 followers on Facebook, over 60,000 on Twitter, nearly 30,000 on Instagram, over 30,000 on TikTok, and we're constantly growing. Also, be sure to become a part of this rapidly growing venture and subscribe to TestyAlabama.com to get inside and premium information on the team as well as recruiting inside the state of Alabama. We are constantly adding to our premium subscription package, so be sure to lock in now. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. As we are back live into the action from the break on a Monday, number one ticket for your Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith, Touchdown Alabama magazine. Happy to have my man Eli Walker in the production studio. Continue hitting that subscribe button, tapping the like button there, that thumbs up, showing the support there. We appreciate you guys. The daily Super Chat Go, $100 daily. Super Chat Go, 100 bucks right there. Appreciate you guys. Once again, Bama men's basketball dancing on. Sweet 16 after taking care of Charleston and Grand Canyon. Got North Carolina coming up here. Next matchup in the NCAA tournament. Also, I know somebody may call and ask this question. Eli, there was a particular sighting at Alabama's practice over the weekend, that being Saturday, former Alabama strength coach Scott Cochran 
was spotted on campus. I know I got a video of him driving away. It was uh, Scott Cochran. And uh, Coach Cochran, who was a part of the Alabama program from 2007 to 2019, Scott Cochran, who was on uh, five national championships. We talked about 2009, 2011, 2012, 2015, and 2017. Uh, some people were asking the question, is Scott Cochran coming back? Is he returning? Uh, maybe if he isn't coming back in a strength coach aspect, would he be back in a motivational coach aspect? But I think the only reason why he was on the campus was because his son, uh, had a visit with the Crimson Tide, or a visit for the Crimson Tide. So I think that was the only reason why Coach Cochran was on campus. That's just me, but a lot of people, when they saw Scott Cochran, they were wondering, you know, why is he here? Is he coming back? What does this mean? Uh, is this a sign? No, I think he was only on campus because his son had a visit here for the Crimson Tide. But phone lines are open, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be made known, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. As you're getting your thoughts to call in here, we go to our call topic, Eli. Will the Miami Dolphins, or are the Miami Dolphins getting Another veteran wide receiver for Tua Tagovailoa. Tua, former Alabama quarterback that had a breakout season last year for Miami. Career high, played in all 17 games, showing you he can stay healthy, avoid injuries. Tua led the league for passing yards, 4,624 finished among the top five, the top 10 in quarterbacks in various categories, including touchdown passes. He finished tied for fifth, 29. Was in the top 10 for completion percentage at 69.3. Top five for passer rating, 101.7. Top 10 for quarterback rating, 60.8. Made his first Pro Bowl last year. So a career year for two in 2023. But the veteran receiver is Odell Beckham Jr. Former LSU standout. Former first round pick in the 2014 NFL Draft by the New York Giants. Do the Dolphins get Odell Beckham for Tua? Here we go to the phone lines right now to grab this call. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Rich Gang. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from? Yes, Steve. My name is David, and I'm calling from outside Washington, D.C. It's uh, Springfield, Virginia. How are you? Doing well, David. Doing well. How about yourself? Great, great. I watch your show all the time. I appreciate it. I'm an Alabama graduate from 1979. Awesome. My my question is, um, my question is, uh, Milrow is our is our quarterback, but we have some quality quarterbacks behind him. Um, do you think we'll lose any of them in the transfer portal? Maybe one, or possibly two, because I know there. I know the one, uh, the one right behind him. I think he's a sophomore now. It, it just worries me because we have four quality quarterbacks, and I like to keep them all. But I, I, I don't know if Mi Milrow is definitely going to be the starter. He's definitely the best. But do you think we'll lose any of our quality quarterbacks? Thank you I very much for your time. No, no, appreciate David calling in right there. That, that David, will come down to uh, – where are these guys in relation to the depth chart roster after the A-Day game, right? That's the reason why Ty Simpson chose to stick around uh, because he wants to compete to see if he's not – if he can't surpass or supplant Milrow to become the starter, can he at least be the immediate number two backup? 
and that can be the same for Dylan Lornigan and Austin Mack as well. So it depends on how does the roster shake up after the spring game. Whoever is not the immediate number two starter, they have a decision to make, right? Whoever's the, whoever's the immediate backup has, has a decision to make, whether they choose to remain at Alabama or whether they choose to hit the transfer portal. Whoever the number three guy is, whoever ends up being number three, they have a choice to make because it's going to be interesting how this whole thing falls. Now, I think Milrow will be the starter, period. That's just my opinion. That's just my thoughts right there. But whoever is the number two guy will remain because you're an injury away from going out there. But whoever's number three, that's the guy where a decision has to be made. Do I choose to remain or do I feel like I'm too talented just to sit down and I'm going to go somewhere else? So it's going to be very intriguing after, after spring uh, how this roster kind of shakes up here. We appreciate David there for that call. You're going to lose somebody to the transfer portal. It's going to happen. You're going to lose somebody. You're not going to keep everybody. Somebody's going to feel like I don't fit in with the Kang and DeBoer system. I don't fit in with the Kane womack system defensively. So let me go somewhere where I can fit in. But to finish up this call topic, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy if the Dolphins add Odell Beckham. Because you already have Tyree Keel and Jalen Waddle. You get Odell Beckham. I mean, you get Odell Beckham, former Super Bowl champion. I mean, two is going to have wide receivers galore if you get Odell Beckham. But it all comes down to what does Chris Greer as the general manager and what does Mike McDaniel do as the head coach? It's going to be intriguing right there that happens. We go to another break right here, folks, in the show. Don't touch that dab when we get back. We get to this Alabama defensive secondary. We all remember the no-fly zone that was 2015 through 2017. Could that potentially be back with this year's defensive backfield? There's a strong chance for it, and I'll break it down after this. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that band without this shirt right here, Fresh Pomo. You gotta also rock the all paint. Like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts, shoes, sweatshirts, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, people, 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 we're back locked in to the action from the break. Number one ticket for Bama. Football news in my own words, George Truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. A little bit of an update here. Damian Harris, former Alabama running back, has renounced his retirement from the National Football League. Damian Harris, drafted by the New England Patriots, traded to the Buffalo Bills, now announcing his retirement from the NFL. I mean, Damien studied broadcasting. You know, he'll be a great communications guy. He'll be great in terms of if he went into broadcasting. Be great if he went into politics. 
whatever Damien Harris chooses to go into, I think he'll be phenomenal at it. Definitely a smooth ambassador when it comes down to Alabama football. That Damien Harris announcing his retirement from the National Football League. But topic two of the conversation here on the show, Alabama's secondary, this group is deadly, very deadly. And uh, they have a chance, a real legit chance to be like the no-fly zone secondary that came through from 2015, 2017. During that time period, you had defensive backs such as Minka Fitzpatrick, Eddie Jackson, Tony Brown, Ronnie Harrison, uh, Hootie Jones, uh, Deontay Thompson, uh, Levi Wallace, Anthony Averett. Uh, you had several defensive backs at that time. They were all physical. They could cover. They were aggressive. Uh, Sometimes they were so passionate, they got into a fight with each other on the sideline. That no-fly zone defensive secondary is what, I was referring, is what I'm referring to. And uh, you look at this secondary right here coming up for the 2024 season, this group has a chance, a real chance, to be what that 2015 to 17 unit was. And the reason why, it's got the coaches to develop this when you discuss Kane Womack, defensive coordinator from South Alabama, this 4-2-5 swarm defense, Maurice Linguist, co-defensive coordinator and cornerbacks coach, Colin Hitzler, co-defensive coordinator and safeties coach. These three gentlemen will develop a secondary that will be that will be massive in the upcoming season. Now, start this thing off here you got two corners who right now holding their own in terms of starting spots here in the secondary those two corners Damani Jackson and Jaleel Hurley Damani Jackson the transfer from USC I'm being told he's making play after play after play after play after play in practice he's just making plays I mean an experienced guy and I know a lot of people would trash Jackson because coming from USC and they had a horrible defense and Caleb Williams had to save them every single time at quarterback. That was not Damani Jackson's fault. That was on Alex Grinch. Damani Jackson now at Alabama is with a real deal coaching staff that can truly develop him. He's making play after play after play in spring practice. She got Damani Jackson as one corner. Jaleel Hurley your other corner got experience of the system, got knowledge here of the culture, an in-state guy, came in the 2023 class, a five-star from Florence High School, North Alabama. He can play. You got both of those two guys right now at corner. But the surprises of spring ball have been the freshmen, which comes as a surprise or a shock to nobody. But the surprises of spring ball have been two freshmen. Red Morgan and Xavier Brown. Every moment I turn, Eli, these Alabama coaches, Kang and DeBoer included, these Alabama coaches and players are talking Red Morgan and Xavier Brown. It doesn't matter where you turn to. These are the, these are the two defensive backs freshmen discussed the most. Kang and DeBoer said, hey, Rhett Morgan has made plays all spring. Xavier Brown is just so consistent in what he does. Devontae Smith says, defensive back Devontae Smith says, mark my words, Rhett Morgan will be a special player for us. He's phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's Devontae Smith talking to Rhett Morgan. You look at Malachi Moore. Red is so athletic, man. It's crazy how athletic he is. Once he gets everything down, that dude's going to be a star. That's Malachi Moore talking about who? Red Morgan. But here comes Colin Hitzler saying, I, I love Red. He's just so fun to coach. He's elastic. The kid jumps out the gym. Uh, 
He wants to know everything. He wants to learn everything. He's from Alabama. He's Bama through and through. He's playing with the ones. Kids, the kids special. There is Colin Hitzler talking about Red Morgan. Then you discuss Zabian Brown, the same things, the same type of praise, the same type of admiration, if you will. Red Morgan is competing with Devontae Smith for the starting spot at Husky in the Alabama secondary. Zabian Brown is competing with Jaleel Hurley for the starting spot at corner. You got two freshmen making waves here in spring ball. Speaking of guys like Devontae Smith, Malachi Moore, and Keon Saba, Bama's got leadership, experienced leadership in the back part of the secondary. When I look at Malachi Moore, I see Eddie Jackson. Why do I say that? Remember, when Eddie Jackson came to Alabama in 2013 from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Eddie started off as a corner. He was a cornerback. Eddie got hurt. And then 2015, that summer, Mel Tucker moved Eddie Jackson to safety. What happened? Eddie exploded, became a star. Same thing here with Malachi. Malachi comes in here, stars as a nickel corner, Endures a couple of injuries. Now he's being moved to strong safety. Playing very well in spring practice. This is going to be fine. At free safety, you got Keon Saab, who's got experience coming over from Michigan. Helped the Wolverines to a college football playoff national championship. Now he's in Alabama. Then you got Devontae Smith. Been through some injuries. Healthy now. Helped Bama to a SEC championship last season. Comp- competing with Red Morgan for Husky. I think it falls into place for it. Coaching staff, you got the right guys coaching these young men up. We're taking another break right here, folks, in the show. Don't touch that dab when we get back. We return to the phone lines. We grab your thoughts, your calls, your conversations. I mean, how do you feel? About this Alabama secondary, you look at spring practice in the upcoming season. Definitely want to get your thoughts after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. This is Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. As we are back into the action right here, folks, from the break, number one ticket for your Bama football news. In my own words, George truly, Stephen Smith of TDA here on a Monday. Appreciate all of you guys sharing this out right here. We got the man, Jimmy Clay. Let's go. Cash money with that $41 in the Super Chats. Jimmy Clay. Helping us out on the show. One of the best Alabama sports followers out there. He's big with the, he's big with the softball. He's big with the football. Jimmy Clay's the man. And oh man, Dale B has come right behind Jimmy with a 41-99 in the super chat. And Dale B, Dale B and Jimmy helping us out here on the show. Daily Super Chat Go, $100 daily. Super Chat Go, 100 bucks right there. Run the table, Sports TV, said Steve. And when we gonna go back to Club Steve-O, I gotta get that, uh, I gotta get my plus three in tonight. Run the table, referring to the awesome backdrop we got for uh, the show. So, 
The backdrop. So, funny story, Eli, about the backdrop I got for the show. The backdrop, Eli, it's basically a, a, it's basically uh, the, the city skyline of, of Birmingham. Now, some may think it's the city skyline of Atlanta. It could be. But it's the city skyline of Birmingham. So, when I debuted the backdrop on last week, on In My Own Words, a lot of the fans felt like I was doing the show from the club. <laughs> and they were saying, that you gotta pull up that Ciroc, son. You gotta pull up that bottle, man. I gotta get my plus three in here. <laughs> you know? So, they thought I was literally, it was funny. They thought I was literally doing the show from Club 112 or Club Magic City or wherever they thought I was. <laughs> wherever they thought I was. That was awesome. That was funny. That, that was hilarious. So, so Eli, pretty soon you are going to see the backdrop and, and you, you may get the exact same feeling that the fans got. I don't know. But, but you may get that exact same feeling. Anyway, 205-448-1358. And I'm going to call in to let your voice be made known here on the show. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you. Call, uh, the call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Game. We take this call. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feeling? State your name. Where you calling from? Hey, this is Jay from Florence, man. What up with you? What's going on, Jay? What's happening? Silly, man. I'm excited about this old road tire thing, man. I mean, man, you know, the, 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 well, for, for good news, stars, I mean, the basketball teams and the Sweet 16, so happy for Nate Oates right there. But where this football team is concerned, we are looking at the spring game. But more importantly, Jay, as you like to say, we got to get down to this regular season, man. Get back to this regular season grind. See, we about there, man. And uh, I, I, I'm a little thankful for the purge, man. I, I'm thankful we get our, all the, uh, I don't know how to say it without really being mean. Because, you know, it was, uh, it was Alabama before Nick Saban. You know what I'm saying? Right. And them fans, them fans right there, you could tell in the fans that in the talk around Alabama football, which fans was here pre Nick Saban and suffered through all of that, and which fans came during Nick Saban. Because them fans, they kind of spoiled and, and and don't really understand football like that always. You know what I'm saying? So so us real Alabama fans, man, be careful who y'all arguing with, man. Because some of these folks, they just they ain't got it all. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't got it all Bama wise. They can't you, you say a name like Wallace Gilberry to them and these folks. They who? What is that? What are you talking about? You know man, what I'm saying? So man, you say Ramsey B. No Robinson. They don't know who that is. Man, come on now, Steve. Come on now, Steve. People will never know about that. You know what I'm saying? So Bama Nation, when y'all arguing with these so called other Bama fans, just be careful, man, because there was an Alabama before Nick Saban, and some of these guys just don't, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm thankful for the purge, man, because you know these last few years, Steve, I've been calling for the love to come back in Alabama, man. And then when you hear guys like uh, like like their coach Shepard talk, and then you hear how the receivers talking, and it's all about we going to get better. We going to have a deep rotation. We, you know what I'm saying? That's the love for each other that we've been missing. The love for Alabama that we've been missing. And you know, I've been calling it out. Man, you we've been playing been. You, you, Jay, the last few years. Jay, you, you have been, and it's not just the receivers. I'm excited about because I've been at two of the media viewings for practice so far this spring. And to watch Jamie Mosley, who played at Alabama as, as, a, as a linebacker, be a coach on the, on the staff with defensive linemen, to watch Jamie Mosley – Work with these D linemen and be like, hey, guys, we rotating everybody. Do you want it or do you not want it? Watching Jamie Mosley get down with these dudes, it is fun. Man, it's, it's a, you can feel it, man. You can feel the love back in our program, man. And another thing, there's just two points that Jay been calling in these last few years. Be known, be known, be known. Man, coordinator creativity, man. I've been calling for that ever since Steve Sarkeesian left, 
and, 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 and what's the trans defensive coordinator we had? Whatever that garbage can name was, his name is Steve Sarkees. As soon as them boys left, and, and we had that garbage can defensive coordinator, and we hired uh, Bill O'Brien, super dumpster himself. When we hired them two, man, you could just feel Alabama football wasn't the same anymore. And I'm glad that the boy in here, because because he's a guy who who it feel like now we we don't know him like that all way. You know what I'm saying? We don't know him like that all way. We still got to go through this here first season. Just, you know, but we can't trust him 90% all way, guys. You know, we can go and give him 90% of them other 10 he got to earn throughout the uh, the regular season. But, yeah, man, it just feel like the, the creativity and the love for Alabama going to be back, man. And I'm sorry to be long-winded, but roll tide, I love y'all, man. Appreciate Jay calling in from Florence right here to the show. And the creativity is here. Creativity is in the program, the love, the appreciation, the joy in the program, and the fact that when you talk to a lot of these players, and I understand the word jargon, the terminology is different offensively and defensively, but when you talk to the players, it's not even like they had a hard time learning this stuff. Hey, Malachi Morris said, I got the terminology down quick. Kendrick Love, man, I got the terminology down easy. I, it didn't take these dudes a long time to learn this stuff. And like, they're excited about being out there. You can see the joy off their face. Like, you can see the hunger, but you can also see the joy off their face. Like, like they, like, like, like they needed this. Like they needed this, this change. They needed this, this new energy, this new way, this new, detail, this new idea, this new spark, right? I mean, even down with us, and I, we appreciate the 17 years of Nick Saban, don't get me wrong, but Eli, the access that even we are getting with Coach DeBoer, I mean, this is, this is unbelievable, Eli. Like, we're able to get this type of access. Like, Saban wouldn't let assistant coaches talk, except for, what, twice a year? The boys let them talk almost every day. <laughs> like, we didn't get this. So this is like Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, all wrapped up in one bus. It's awesome though. Gotta appreciate my man Jimmy Clay again with the 56 dollar donation. Jimmy Clay back in the house. Daily Super Chat goal of $100 has been met. Appreciate you, the Bama family, helping us out on the show. We'll call topic right here. So, Jaheim Otis, who uh, has changed his number from 91 to 10. Jaheim Otis, who changed one letter to the spelling of his first name, going from A to E. Uh, Otis, uh, been dealing with a bit of an injury in spring practice so far. Now, according to Coach DeBoer, nothing serious it looks like. Still trying to await the timetable of his return, but nothing necessarily too, too serious there of Mr. Otis, who is in his junior season of a defensive line. Alabama's gonna need him as one of the four men down in this rotation lined up. So, you're gonna need Otis what he provides up front. Hopefully you get him back healthy very soon here, but he's been dealing with a little injury here throughout spring ball. Not just him, Devontae Smith's been dealing with, you know, some injuries, but he's out there practicing. Sterling Dixon, freshman, dealt with a little nick and a bruise there, but he's still out there practicing. Jeremy Bernard dealt with a little bump and a bruise here and there, but he's out there practicing. So you, you, you're getting, you know, when, when guys are just banging around, you'll get a bump knee, bruised shoulder, stuff like that. It's football, it happens. But hopefully with Otis, Family Nation will have him back uh, pretty soon here. But we take our final break here on the show. Don't touch that down. When we get back, we have our discussion on Caden Proctor. Does he? win the starting job back as an offensive tackle. We wrap things up with Proctor after this.
I'm Malachi Moore. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. What's going on? This is Benny Bites. I'm the founder and owner of Touchdown Alabama. And you guys are supporting one of the only independent outlets covering Alabama football today. No other sports, no networks, just Alabama football. Roll Tide Roll. All right, folks, how we feeling? On a Monday, we're back into the action from the break. How to show up the streets here. Talking Bama football in my own words. George truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. Appreciate you guys checking us out on a Monday. Got my man Eli Walker handling the controls there in the production studio. Bama men's basketball dancing on to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament of March Madness after taking care of Charleston and Grand Nate Oates and company. They got North Carolina next up here on the docket in terms of the big dance. But final topic of conversation here, folks, we look at this discussion of one Caden Proctor, former five-star, 2023 class at offensive tackle coming from Iowa, originally chose the Crimson Tide, played 13 games last season as a left tackle, helped Alabama to the SEC championship game, defeating Georgia, Helped Bama to a college football playoff appearance. Made the all-SEC freshman team. And then the minute Nick Saban announced his retirement, and I understand this because a lot of them did it. Can't really, I guess, blame them. Caden Proctor chose to enter the transfer portal, go back home to Iowa. Well, he gets back home to Iowa, finds out home is not what he thought it would be. And uh, he gets right back in the transfer portal and comes back to the University of Alabama. And you have people that have mixed feelings about this. Some say, welcome him back with open arms. He's young. He's a kid. He's 19. Uh, he made a mistake. We all made mistakes. Don't throw stones, which I get that. I understand that. And then you have others that say, man, no, nah, pimp juice left here. Don't you bring that brother. Don't you embrace that brother back in here. He got out of here. Don't you bring that man. No. Don't you allow him to come back in here. You roll what you already have. He left for a reason. And I can see that sentiment as well. But he's back into the Alabama football program. So the question is, does he win the starting job back at left tackle? That's the question. Does he win it back? It is not going to be handed to him. Absolutely not. Gonna have to earn this. Caden Proctor was not on campus during the offseason fourth quarter program with the staff. He was not on campus during the first week of spring practice. Some of these other guys have a leg up on him with this new staff, even though he's got 13 games of on field action football season experience. But when you talk about guys like Elijah Pritchett, and Miles McVay, and Wilkin Formby, and uh, Aquil Betrand, uh, no names like that, that did not go anywhere, that stayed with the University of Alabama football program. Caden Proctor is competing against you know, those guys to try to win a starting job back in left tackle. Now, let's, 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 let's say Eli Caden wins the job. If Caden wins the job back, then uh, you're going to have a nasty offensive line when you talk about Caden Proctor at left tackle, Tyler Booker at left guard, Parker Browse for the center, more than likely, right guard Jaden Roberts. Your only question will be right tackle. And right now, the two guys that are battling at that right tackle position, Miles McVay and Wilkin Formby. That's the battle at right tackle right now. Miles McVay and Wilkin Formby. I think McVeigh a slight edge at this point, McVeigh. 
bit more, bit more nastier than Foreman. But uh, McVay, more of an edge right now. But if Caden Proctor were to win starting job at left tackle back, it would be Proctor, Booker, Brasford, Roberts, McVay. And that's a Joe Moore Award type offensive line right there. I'm not gonna even I'm not gonna even sugarcoat that. That is a Joe Moore Award type offensive line. But we'll have to see if Caden Proctor is able to win the starting job back there as an offensive tackle. As always, Bama Nation, you want the best in news, notes, information, coverage, material on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama magazine app. You download the app from the Apple and App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. Now, for your audio needs, check us out. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, Google Play, iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees for I try to be back on Wednesday. Continuing the conversation that is Tide Football. Gotta give a shout out to all of you, the Bama Nation, for your phone calls, chatting in the YouTube chat line. Super Chats, donations, you guys allowed us to hit that daily Super Chat goal of $100. Appreciate that from all of you. Making this your show, your spot, your place for all things Tide football. Gotta show some love to my man, Eli Walk, in the production studio. Till next time, folks. Husbands, love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children continue doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing to not be bored there. Get yourself those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, I'm your man, Stephen Smith, and you've been listening to Moan Words. <laughs>